Summer Quarter, Unit 2, The Word, the Agent of Creation, The Word Gives Peace. Our scripture lesson today comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 29. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. For But you will see me, because I live you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself in him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself in us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now, I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. Did you know that John 14 is part of an extended farewell speech in which Jesus gives to his apostles final teachings, especially those concerning the Holy Spirit? You'll find that in John chapter 13, verse 31 through chapter 16, verse 33, and occurs between the end of the Last Supper and arriving at Gethsemane. This is sometimes called the Upper Room Discourse, which begins in the Upper Room and continues as Jesus and his disciples walk to Gethsemane. The term advocate is translated Paracletos or paraclete, and although it is translated comforter in older English translations, the word comfort had a stronger meaning in the past. Instead of meaning to console as in comforting thoughts, the older meaning is to empower or give provisions for battle as in giving aid and comfort to an enemy. That the Holy Spirit is called the paraclete in verses 16 and 26 in John chapter 14, but in 1 John chapter 2 verse 1, the term paraclete is applied to Jesus. That many Bible scholars, uh, teachers <clears throat> take verse 26 and John chapter 16 verse 13 as a promise limited to the apostles for the creation of the Christian scriptures. And some interpreters 
view this as a validation of church tradition and a continuation of the Spirit's work in guiding the faithful. Islam teaches that the paraclete is Muhammad, but our text and the scripture in no way supports this view. That the entire passage found uh, in John chapter 13, verse 31, through chapter 16, verse 33, is Jesus' farewell speech in which he prepares his disciples for life without his physical presence. That the primary concern of John chapter 14 is to prepare the community of Jesus' followers for life in his physical absence. And the theme is captured in the promise of Jesus to his disciples in John 14 verse 18, which says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Although this promise was spoken to the disciples' fear and despair that they would be left alone, it is for us today as well. That Jesus not only promised not to leave his disciple and us comfortless, but he also promised to leave his peace with the disciples. Shalom is the Hebrew word for peace. Shalom denotes the positive presence of harmony and wholeness, of health and prosperity, and of integration and balance. It is a state of soundness or flourishing in all aspects of life in our relationship with God, our relationships with each other, and our relationship with ourselves. Shalom is when everything is as it should be. In other words, shalom summarizes God's basic intention for humanity, that all people live in a condition of all rightness in every circle of life. Peace and justice free humans to live as God intended. Our biblical lesson background. The Greek word par parakletos, translated as advocate, is paraclete in English and comes from a verb meaning to call to one's side. The word comes from the Greco-Roman courtroom where a paraclete was someone who could provide help and assistance to a person in a trial setting, give counsel, plead that person's cause, and intercede with the judge and the courtroom. Background fits with the gospel's running themes of trial and judgment. As the paraclete, the Holy Spirit serves as a counselor for the disciples and will give comfort and help to them when the hostile, unbelieving world persecutes them and dwelling in the disciples, he will lead them to a deeper understanding of Jesus and enable them to bear witness to him. You find that in John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. The Spirit serves also as prosecutor against the world and will prove to the disciples that the world is wrong about sin, righteousness, and condemnation. Jesus promised to send a paraclete or advocate, but spoke of another paraclete, and the expression another paraclete implies similar functions as a former paraclete. God is the first paraclete comforting the people through word and deed. And Jesus is a paraclete in his acting and speaking on behalf of the Father. And the other paraclete Jesus promised will continue the comforting action of Jesus. This is the ongoing promise of consolation and support in the absence of Jesus and applies to us today as well. 
our lesson explained. In verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. This statement was not only for his disciples at the time, but also for us today. And by saying this, Jesus was promising his disciples and us that they would not be left alone and he would come again in the person of the advocate, the Holy Spirit. Love for Jesus means keeping his commands by responding to all he taught with faith and obedience. Remember, as noted earlier, the Greek word par parakletos or paraclete is often translated as comforter, is misleading because the meaning of the word has changed since the publication of the King James Version of the Bible. Advocate is closer to the true meaning of the word because the literal meaning of paraclete is one called alongside, to help, especially in the legal sense. And it can also mean someone else to stand by you. You see that in verse 16. Jesus was assuring us that his ministry would continue through another, the advocate, when he returned to the Father. And the one to follow him would be sent to stand in his place by our side to give help and encouragement. And with the promise of an advocate comes the assurance that Jesus will never leave us alone. And we will always have someone to walk beside us through the ups and downs of life. In verse 17, Jesus calls the advocate the spirit of truth and will communicate the truth. Truth is defined as perfect correspondence with reality. And for this reason, God's spirit, the spirit of truth, is the most reliable means of divine revelation. And since God is a person, it makes sense that his most compelling revelation must be a person. Jesus promised the disciples that the spirit of truth would be with them forever, even after he returned to the Father. And when given to believers, meaning us as well, he would never be taken away because the spirit of truth is Christ's continuing presence working in and through the church until God's redemptive work is complete. In verse 18, Jesus promised his disciples and he has promised us that he would not leave them orphans, but would come again. Now the word orphan is unique because it is only found in this passage and in James chapter one, verse 27. And in James, it highlights the distress of orphans and widows. Jesus came to the disciples in two day, in two ways. First, following the resurrection, turning their sorrow into joy and helping them overcome their distress. And second, in the person of the advocate. He does the same for us when we accept him and put our trust and faith in him. Note, Jesus promised that the advocate would replace his physical presence. Remember the advocate who is the Holy Spirit is not restricted to the giving of spiritual gifts or the producing of Christian character, but includes making Jesus present with believers as well. His presence empowers people to pursue goodness, righteousness, peace, and justice in Jesus' name. Jesus promised he would come back to his disciples, meaning us as well, not unbelievers, 
in the person of the advocate. And as verse 19 says, the resurrected Jesus would not reveal himself to the world, but his disciples would see him in his resurrected form. And he said in verse 19b, because I live, ye shall live also. In other words, since Jesus was raised from the dead, his disciples would experience life through the spirit in the here and now. But the promise is only for believers, those who love him, as verse 21 says, because the living Jesus empowers the church to face tomorrow and turn away from fear. As believers, he empowers us to face tomorrow and turn away from fear. The hymn writer penned, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. In verse 22, Judas, not Iscariot, asked Jesus why he would show himself to the disciples and not the rest of the world. In asking this question, Judas was looking for Jesus to appear startling the world and manifesting his power in the judgment of nations because of his belief in the prediction of the ancient prophets of a public self-disclosure of the Messiah. The appearance of Jesus was only reserved for those who obey the word of Jesus and his father. Jesus answered him by repeating what he had told the disciples in John chapter 14, verses 15 and 21. If you love me, keep my words. Jesus was telling them that if they wanted to know him, they must love him and keep his word. Because after the resurrection, the Father and the Son would dwell in the disciples through the Holy Spirit and through him, they would come to know and participate in the divine communion. What Jesus was saying in verse 23 is that his commands through the Holy Spirit can lead believers to an inner place where he can reveal himself. This is the promise of Jesus. You will note that Jesus conveys the relationship between love, obedience, and divine indwelling in negative terms, since disobedience is the sign of a lack of love for the Father because Jesus' word is not his, but the Father's. As verse 24 reminds us that love and obedience toward Jesus opens the door for God to dwell in the disciples and us. Jesus promises his peace to believers in verses 25 through 29. And with the mention of peace is the biblical promise of shalom, peace, well-being, everything is all right. A blessing of reconciliation that God promised to bestow upon his people in the act of salvation and this peace moves us to our purposeful ends in God's will and drives out any and all fear. In verse 28, Jesus continues to console his troubled disciples, promising that he would come back to them, not only after his resurrection, not only at the second coming, parousio, but also during the present time through the Holy Spirit. Although it was hard for them to grasp, the disciples should have been happy and rejoiced that Jesus was going to the Father. The Father is greater than Jesus in his mortal humanity, but at his resurrection and ascension, Jesus' humanity was glorified by the Father and became greater you find that in John chapter 14, verse 12. If you will remember, Jesus was preparing his disciples and had prophesied the events ahead of time. 
in order that when the events happened, they, meaning the disciples, would believe in him and believe that he was present with the Father and to raise and strengthen their faith. Some concluding thoughts. People seek trustworthy guidance for their lives. How can we find guidance? Our love for Jesus shown through our obedience to his words and the Holy Spirit's teachings create an incredible peace. As Christians, we must never forget the reason the Father through Jesus made the promise to send an, an advocate into the world to help us. First, the gift of the advocate is made by the Father to those who love and obey his Son. Obedience is belief in Jesus and a commitment to follow him. Jesus' disciples were not perfect, and neither are we. And they were not always faithful, and neither are we. The disciples, in their own imperfect way, however, loved him and sought to obey him. It was to disciples such as these that Jesus promised the advocate. Second, the gift of the advocate was made by the Father to the disciples at Jesus' request. After Jesus' glorification, he asked his Father to send the Spirit to his disciples. Third, Jesus promised to send another advocate so that his disciples would not be left alone as orphans, which suggests that the advocate would come as a replacement of Jesus' physical presence and that the advocate would do for the disciples after Jesus' departure what Jesus did for them before he left to join the Father in heaven. Fourth, Jesus promised his disciples that the advocate would be with them forever. Remember, the gift of the Holy Spirit, once given, is never taken away. The Spirit has come. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we lift our hearts in praise and thanksgiving for your Son, Jesus, and the advocate you sent on our behalf. Give us strength to know that we are never left alone in this world. We are strengthened by your comforting action on our behalf and your promise of peace and all rightness in our lives. Father, help us sense the presence of your spirit as he dwells within us. May we draw on his strength to show your son's love daily through our obedience. Give us peace in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.